Can I get a pint of the clout stout, please? To be in networking. The idea is to talk about something in networking in the time it takes to drink two beers. Now, just like the last episode, I'm drinking dark beer. Now, this, for everybody who's entertained, is real beer. You should not be able to see through it. That is the nature of things. Second, this beer is, well, not quite room temperature, but it's certainly not cold. The reason that most beer is cold is to deaden your taste buds because it tastes awful. And by making it super cold, and the colder the better, your taste buds cannot taste the awful chemicals and the badness that is in the beer. So endeth the beer lesson for today. Hmm. Hmm. But now, let's talk to beer networking because really, there's never enough networking that you could do and even with beer, there should be networking, I think. As always, I'm Greg from Packet Pushers, and it's a little weird to be talking to you on this screen. Now, I am one beer into this networking session because you probably would have noticed the previous one, and I can't possibly stop myself. And today, I want to talk about superhuman networking. That is, networking that is better than a human can do it. Now, it's it's been something that's been around for many years in that you can't do networking well. That is, even though we promote the concept of the command line, or even though we promote the idea that you matter, as a matter of fact, you actually don't. If an IT manager could get rid of you, do you know what? They'd be in that like a shot. And we know that that's a truth, because that's what vendors have been selling IT managers for the last decade. And guess what? They've been getting rid of you as quickly as they can manage it. Every time an IT sales rep turns up to say, you know, if only you bought the latest and greatest shiny, shiny thing, you could have less staff. And so the IT manager, suitably bamboozled by the appropriate sales rep, who tra promptly trousers a substantial commission, gets rid of headcount while buying the most expensive capital asset that they can possibly imagine, under the theory that getting rid of people will actually save the money in the long run. And of course what we know is that with a car that has no driver, the car is actually not very useful. And although IT managers aren't very smart, slowly but steadily they're beginning to realize that any number of spreadsheets won't actually return an ROI if there's nobody driving it. And hence we need to be better than human, we need to be superhuman, right? Because obviously IT managers are idiots. If they can't work out from their spreadsheets that they need more staff to operate this thing to generate an ROI, then we have to help them with that decision. Now look, when you're configuring a router, when you're configuring a device, and you're configuring it at the CLI, whether you're configuring a checkpoint firewall, or a Palo Alto, or a Cisco switch, or a Cisco router, or whatever it is, you are required to configure something, usually at the CLI. The CLI is the most heinous, as we know from most things. Configuring at the command line, one finger fold, one floor, one error and the whole thing goes to poop and that's not very good. So what we tend to do is implement these ITIL changes, these ideas that you know if only we had reviewed the change or pretended that the change wasn't actually a change, maybe it wasn't real and we could do something better, then you know we, we could make it less risky. But the simple point of fact is you're just human, you're prone to errors. The people who review the changes make mistakes, they get bored, 
you know, looking at the same old VTP configuration, looking at the same old spanning tree, looking at VLANs, looking at layer 2, looking at loops, look, oh my, you know, and errors just happen. And honestly, at the end of the day, when you've made the same change 50 times in a th month, who really cares about change control? You just sign off and you blank out and you go, whatever, I'm just not ever, you know, we, we know this. After 50 times of doing it in the last 30 days, you say, how can we possibly get it wrong? And then, of course, everything goes wrong. And let's not forget our lovely vendor partners who have a shared responsibility on all this. Because people don't say, people don't blame vendors nearly often enough, right? If I'm paying, excuse me, if I'm paying big dollars to a vendor to be able to produce a product, you know what I expect about that product? I expect it should work. It should be better than the thing that I could do myself. Maybe if I was using Linux or something, it would be acceptable. Like the big thing about Linux ultimately is that open source products work pretty well for free. And there are not very many occasions where I should need to pay for an operating system. Or why would I use Windows when Linux does the same job pretty much free of charge? It's that Linux sets a baseline. If I'm going to pay this much for something, then Linux says, well, this much value can be delivered for free, and therefore at commercial prices I expect better quality, more security, higher reliability, rapid fixes. And in networking, we don't kind of get that. I know that's subversive, but what we really want is a vendor solution that's actually going to be reliable. But yet we have problems. The command line buffer overruns. We have defects in code. We have Yang interfaces, which are rarely reliable. We have uh, 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 the most popular networking browser vendor actually has no commit rollback. That is, I'm going to commit a change. If the change is unreliable, I should be able to roll back. And yet, 80% of their products don't even support this most basic and predictable of features. Look, let me speak about predictable because that's something that gets me really peeved. One of the things we really want about our network isn't reliability, or isn't HA, or isn't availability. What we want is predictability. What we really, really want after all the things that we've had is the ability to predict when something's going to work or when it isn't. If it's not highly available, as long as we can predict that it's not highly available, if we have to take it down for service, like an IBM mainframe, which tends to get taken down every, every week on a Saturday night for two hours, as long as we can predict that, that's the main thing, right? If our firewalls are high availability, and yet when they fail over in a HA state, they actually just collapse and die. That's unpredictable. It's not the fact that they're not reliable, it's the fact that they're not predictable. And so this is one of the problems with human networking, is we cannot reliably predict what you're going to do. Can I give this job to a human and they will reliably do that? Usually not. So for me, unpredictable means unreliable. Unreliable doesn't mean faulty, failure, power supplies or whatever. It just means I cannot predict when the flaw is going to happen. And that's where the bigger problem creeps in. So, this is where we start to see things in SDN like intent-based networking come in. Because what intent-based networking does is it actually does predictable tasks. That is, there are a certain number of things in our networking that just reliably do the same thing over and over and over. And why are we finger banging our way to success, if you want to call it that, instead of just telling a script to do it. And that's called automation. Right? Intent-based networking broadly tends to abstract common tasks away into templates and then is able to plug the variables in for you. Now, there's going to be much more advancement here. We're going to see machine learning and artificial intelligence or some other sort of salesy buzzword and you're going to need to be smart about deciding whether the vendor's lying to you or something. You know, most vendor sales reps are lying to you or exaggerating or doing whatever it is that needs to close a deal, right? Remember that your vendor sales rep is paid to close a deal. He's not paid to be nice to you. He's not paid to be your friend. He Well, he is paid to be your friend because it generates him more sales. But the point here is, is that the sales rep ultimately is there, makes a lot of money, and has to earn many millions of dollars per customer to be justify their existence. So... Intent-based networking is a serious issue that you should be thinking about. And automation is like a subset of it. So even though you've automated, what automation does is it gives you repeatable. It gives you um, the same thing over and over. The challenge with automation that strikes me is it's static. It's unchangeable. It does the same thing from week in, week out. 
this is where intent-based networking differs from automation in that it says, oh well, the templates from which I configure a VLAN can change over time, so I need to be flexible enough to take automation up to the next level. Therefore, I need to be more than dumb. Because automation is kind of stupid, right? If you sit down and write a, port, a Python script or something like that, you're going to end up doing the same thing over and over, week in, week out. And that's really not going to... It's still better than human. It's still superhuman. But it's not really going to deliver a whole lot of value. So the final part is, to be superhuman in networking, you need to be doing more than just avoiding the CLI about being predictable. You need to be thinking about ways that you're reliably able to going to be doing the same thing predictably week in and week out. And you know what's superhuman? The answer is not you. Because um, you would rather go and have a beer like me. And at that point, I'm very human. See you at the next one. <laughs>